writes for the Marina Times. He's a huge Giants and uh, Warriors and San Francisco Niners fan. He comes and goes on a rainbow. How about it for the great Michael Snyder, everybody? Hey, greetings and salutations, everybody. Mark, Kim, Albert, Tony, our wonderful, wonderful audience. Uh, and I want to start today by again wishing everyone a merry christmas yeah yeah i know <laughs> new year's <laughs> eve is already gone new year's day is gone but it still ain't over by my ever accurate uh count today is the 12th day of the 12 days of christmas oh. Which mm -hmm. could mean we're in for an assault by a troop of 12 drummers drumming. So uh, uh, lock the studio door, Mark. We don't want any of that happening. <laughs> that would be ugly, yeah, yeah. yeah. What it really means, though, is that uh, tonight is 12th night, uh, just like the Shakespeare play. Oh, sure. Uh, and you can finally drag that Christmas tree out to the curb. Uh, also, mm -hmm. tomorrow is the Feast of the Epiphany. You know, I'm Jewish, but I know about the uh, Christian calendar. I see. Um, the Feast of the Epiphany, January 6th, kicks off carnival season in New Orleans. That's why I know about the Feast of the Epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rio, uh, other places where good times are going to be had until Ash Wednesday brings Lent to all those who believe. And I believe in a good time, so get ready to party, people. Speaking of which... Yes, sir. A little belated happy birthday. I had the great honor and pleasure of joining you and Courtney and a bunch of uh, your friends and colleagues for a little birthday gathering. Oh, I don't recall that, but uh, good for you. It I, was, it I, was... I might have been out for much of it. You were blackout drunk, but mm. you loved everybody. I, was... I do love everybody. But I still you, love everybody. I'd be everybody. willing to friends... bet my lunch that there's alcohol involved. <laughs> I'm filled with love. Your friends are pretty wonderful, yeah. and uh, they come from all walks of life. Yes. And uh, anyway, I just had a great time, and I want to... Well, uh, again... thank you. Uh, I I, uh, all I can say, Michael, is it's always good to see you, uh, oh, but I, you. I, I, the real uh, question I had for you was related to, for, I'll get to your Marina Times column in a moment, but was related to the Niners. Now, they don't need this game. You no. and the commissioner probably agree that uh, our backup quarterback is probably better than their backup quarterback. Who are we playing this week? Carson Wentz and the L.A. Rams. It's strange to say that insofar as Wentz was a Philadelphia Eagle, and then he's been bouncing around the league, and they want to... Um, sit matt stafford their uh quarterback who sure he's who a hall of fame quarterback them to the uh, super, super bowl, bowl for sure. god's sake and uh obviously kyle shanahan the niners coach wants to sit uh brock purdy to you know kind of let those little dings heal up uh speaking and of dings i'm being told that i should be dinging in so far as oh really uh, i i will uh, here's what i will say about in so far as michael just said that can't ding it because we only ding words and that's a phrase but it is a kind of highfalutin phrase insofar as, I mean, it's kind of a phrase you'd write more than you would say, but he is a writer, so I, we got to give him some room. I'm anyway. A, I'm college educated, dude. I can't stop myself. I see. Okay, very good. All right. You know what? Uh, all I can tell you about uh, the 49ers. Uh, this is the longest analysis. What, what's going to happen? I don't want the rust oh, my God. to get in the way of their uh Our first backups are game. better than their backups. Okay. Who's going to win? I think the 49ers all are going right, to win. Thank you very much. I hope Michael. they all win right. because it would be uh, ignominious. Hit the oh ding. my god, that is a total uh, If we were to lose. Right. Dude, let's talk about uh, new movies before we get to the Marina Times column about the best movies of the year. And, okay. and I go into a little sidebar about the worst. Um, this is the dead zone in uh, the movie industry. This is when uh, potential failures, uh, things that didn't test well, things that have been lying around on their shelf are released by the uh, studios and the distributors. And um, that's what we have this weekend. But let's proceed. I feel like we should. Well, please, please, please. Okay, begin. like we've had horror movies about an evil possessed car, yeah. Christine, and an evil possessed dog, Cujo, mm -hmm. uh, both courtesy of uh, of author Stephen King's novels. And we've had horror movies about evil possessed dolls, the recent Annabelle films, and evil possessed ventriloquist dummies. Oh, they're so scary. Uh, magic and Dead Silence. And now with Night Swim. We hit, finally have a horror movie about an evil possessed swimming pool. <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear this premise. Go okay, ahead. there's never this been anything gonna, like this. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to yeah. drag you down into its depths if it doesn't like you splashing around in it. I wow. mean, the, the premise is hilarious. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that anyone pissing in the pool would piss it off. And there you go. Oh, bye bye. I don't like the p word, but all right. I'm continue. sorry. Uh, yeah, they might I mean, as well have titled yeah. this thing the Backyard Swimming Pool of Doom or. 
uh, breaststroke to hell? I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what's next? Blades of death about an evil electric lawnmower? I mean, uh, well, consider this. Well, actually, that's not a bad idea. How about tool Ooh, shed of no return? it's a wild idea, but it just uh, might work. Exactly. It's a wild idea. The movie business is so in love with low-budget horror movies that any household item could be the big bad in some that scary movie. True, yes. I mean, how about the hungry, hungry trash compactor? I uh, love it. Uh, I, wait, wait, wait. Garbage dispose all. I mean, uh. you don't want to be <laughs> dragged into that thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get back to uh, the weird movie at hand, Night Swim. Uh, a family led by uh, former Milwaukee Brewers pitcher Ray Waller, played by Wyatt Russell. He of Monarch Legacy of Monsters right now. He's uh, the, USA, uh, the U.S. agent in the Marvel TV shows and movies. He was so good in Everybody Wants Some, the Richard Linklater film. He plays Roy, um, Ray, who moves into a suburban fixer-upper with an out-of-view swimming pool in the backyard, uh, as you know one has. Uh, and it needs a good cleaning insofar as it's all, and so far, it's all clogged with leaves and other crud. So I see. It has Ray to be had cleaned to up. Yeah, Ray had to retire from baseball due to a degenerative disease. But after cleaning the pool and filling it, he, his wife, played by Curry Condon of the Banshees of Inishirin. I mean, she's a terrific actress. Right. Uh, his high school age daughter and junior high age son start swimming, and the waters of the pool seem to energize Ray and put him into remission. No. Oh. But the pool doesn't it's seem restored. so. It's restored. It's a positive thing. No, the pool doesn't seem so friendly to the rest of the family, oh, Mark. Oh, <laughs> only good to the one. So, you know, there's a Faustian situation here, as well as some uh, backstory mumbo-jumbo. I'll the, ding, Faustian. The movie is pretty waterlogged. I mean, it, it, ah. silly would be an appropriate word. Um, I, I so, wait a minute, it, 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 it makes one of the sick family members healthy again, but it kills off the other ones. Well, no, I'm not going to go so far as to spoil it for any bonehead who wants to watch it. Okay. But honestly... Um, I'm kind of into it so far. Look, I laughed a couple times as I watched it, although uh, I rolled my eyes more frequently. <laughs> Night Swim was written and directed by Bryce McGuire and based on a short film he made with a creative partner. It was also produced by those uh, scamps who brought us Megan, which was much funnier and more fun, mm. and The Nun, which was scarier, Dude, I watched this thing, and I didn't need artificial respiration when it was over, but I'm afraid it did kill my uh, brain cell or two. Uh, you, oh, my God. Night Swim is in theaters. Phineas wants to know, did anyone pee in the pool? See, I already brought that up. No, I know. you didn't. I would have preferred that you bring it up as Phineas did with the P-E-E -E as opposed to the word that you chose. Oh, but anyway. I'm so very sorry. I yes. don't want to pee I mean, you I, off. I, 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 <laughs> thank you. Let's move on. Uh, Rennie Harlan has directed some decent action flicks, among them Die Hard 2 and, and Cliffhanger, and some clunkers like the hilariously bad Cutthroat Island. Um, but The Bricklayer, out this week in the uh, early January, new movie Dead Zone is one of those clunkers. Uh, this is the latest movie that gives its main character a pedestrian job uh, delineated in the title. And it turns out that the guy is much more than he seems, generally being, I don't know, a, a death-dealing, near-indestructible hero forced to fight against overwhelming odds mm. using a certain set of skills. I That's like right. it. A delineated is a ding word. Uh, Liam Neeson stars in some of them, thus the reference to his certain set of skills. Right. But at least it feels like that's the sort of movie we have here. And, and by the way, the next movie like this, after The Bricklayer, is next week. It's The Beekeeper. I mean, they're going to keep rolling these movies out. Some bizarre job, and the guy has left the service, and he's pulled back in. Uh, anyway, um... The Beekeeper features, by the way, hard-headed, uh, no-nonsense ass kicker Jason Statham, as you guessed it, the Beekeeper, and looks far more engaging and fun than the Bricklayer. And these movies do have a titular character out of the business for some reason. Titular. They're retired or burned out or disgusted until circumstances, you know, just like in The Godfather, yeah. call you back them in. back in. Sure. And so it is with The Bricklayer, which catches up with ex-CIA fixer Steve Vale, played by Aaron Eckert. Who's a, who's a pretty good actor, been in some um, good movies, and uh, here he's happily building a brick wall on the roof of a Philadelphia building while listening to Miles Davis on his earbuds. He's a quirky guy. All right. But he won't be laying bricks for long after he finds out that an ex-colleague played by terrific character actor Clifton Collins Jr. has gone rogue in Greece, killing journalists and making it seem like the CIA is responsible. 
So a high-level uh, CIA administrator, again, here's another good actor, played by Tim Blake Nelson, pressures Steve to take down the loose cannon, teams him with a female agent who has no experience in the field, and they set off for Greece to fix the situation and clear the agency of wrongdoing. That's right, Mark. They have to clear the CIA of wrongdoing. <laughs> <laughs> That'll take more than one movie. Good luck with that. Anyway, the main actors, all pros, including Nina Dobrev as the female agent, they go through their paces. You know, they got to get that paycheck. And most of the action sequences are pretty snappy. But we have seen so many of these plot elements before. And every character is so thinly drawn and cliched that there is not any emotional punch to any of it. The bricklayer more like the egg layer. Wow, uh, it's not, I see what you did. It's not terrible, but that's the best thing I can say about it. The Brick Layer is in theaters and streaming on the usual video on demand platforms. Oh, it's streaming at the same time. Oh yeah, you know okay. they're they're rolling this baby out. They they're not messing around. Uh, okay, continuing this week's parade of mediocrity. <laughs> there's mediocrity the latest is a dang word. the latest based on a true story movie about racing cars, the people who make them and the people who drive them. But unlike last year's high-profile auto race movies, Gran Turismo and Ferrari, both of which had merit and flair, Race for Glory, Audi versus Lancia, is a drag. And I don't mean as in drag race, the ones with cars, not the RuPaul version. I mean as dull. Uh, race for Glory attempts to tell the tale. Uh, with lots of invented dramatization to spice things up, one would presume, of the competition between car manufacturers Audi of Germany and Lancia of Italy, which reached ahead when both companies faced off at the 1983 Rally World Championships in Europe. It seems that the company with the winning vehicle would you know, sell way more uh, sports cars in the aftermath of the victory, so there was plenty on the line here. Uh, the well-regarded German leading man, uh, Daniel Brohl, uh, best known in the U.S. as uh, a villain in The King's Man and Baron Zemo in Marvel movies and TV shows, plays the head of the Audi team, while the rest of the cast, including Ricardo Scamar uh, Scamarchio, uh, who was uh, in last year's Haunting in Venice as the Lancia exec, they, they, they do their best, but they're not familiar faces beyond uh, Daniel Brohl. Uh, and it doesn't matter much because Race for Glory is short on palpable thrills and engaging characters. Uh, the supposedly high stakes never feel impactful. In, in fact, despite the kind of twisty road rally sequences through changing terrain, the movie feels like it's going in circles. Uh, and it's clearly a passion project for the director and co-screenwriter Stefano Mordini and uh, Gamarchio, by the way, who was also listed as a screenwriter. But it's curiously short on passion uh, Race for Glory is in theaters and available on streaming platforms. Yeah. Didn't really like Race for Glory. How about uh, what else do you have to offer? I, I do have one Boston? more movie, and guess what? It's the best movie of this quartet of releases and the only one I can recommend with any enthusiasm. Quartet, I will ding. Go Quart ahead. Quartet? Really? Okay. Um, the movie's called Mayhem, and it's a French production about a boxer named Sam who's been incarcerated in a Paris area prison for drug offenses, gets paroled, immediately finds himself in worse trouble than he was before and is forced to flee the country, ending up in Thailand. And there, this generally decent guy finds honest work, falls in love with single mother Mia, and takes on the role of father to her adorable daughter, Dara. But That's he gets pulled back in. Well, Sam and Mia want to buy some beachfront property and build a restaurant, but finances are tight, mm. and to get enough cash One for the last land fight. deal, Sam, no, Sam agrees to do a risky job that is not, you know, a boxing thing. Although, while in Thailand, he participates in kickboxing matches to make a little scratch and even throws them for wow. a little bit of a, pardon the expression, kickback. But yeah. in this case, it's not that. Oh, it's got to kill somebody? Uh, yeah, he's, he's agreeing to do this risky job for a local crime boss named yeah. Narong, who is a fellow French expat. I said, do you think things are going to go wrong and force Sam to somehow make things right? Uh, does John Wick shoot people? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest about this thing. You know where this thing is going. Uh, so Nassim Lee is, is uh, spring-loaded as Sam, and uh, the venerable French actor Olivier Gourmet is his usual compelling self as the sinister mobster. Uh, the copious martial arts fight sequences, uh, which also include guns, knives, meat cleavers, and swords, are crackerjack and true to the title Mayhem. 
And here, the emotional content, which is centered around Sam, Mia, and Dara, is genuinely affecting, unlike these other films we've already discussed. Mm. Mayhem was well-directed by uh, Xavier Jens, who also co-wrote the script. It may be a violent B-movie, but it's one of the good ones. And yes, it's mostly in French and Thai, with a bit of English, so it will require you to read subtitles between the acrobatics, punches, and stabbing. If you like this sort of diversion, it'll be worth it. Wow. Uh, it's in theaters and available on streaming platforms. Isn't that interesting? So Michael has recommended Mayhem, the boxer turned uh, lover of this woman and her child and Pull want... back in. He doesn't want to get involved in crime anymore, but he has no choice. He has to do something. I mean, we're all faced with tough decisions in life. It is the best of the lot. Michael says Mayhem is in theaters and also on streaming platforms. Race for Glory, Audi versus Lancia is the film that was well shot, well executed, but has no heart. And uh, Michael can't really recommend it. No, it's it's kind of dull. The Bricklayer. Not terrible, he says. Aaron Eckhart as the, uh, maybe you want to change that graphic, uh, Albert or Kim, whoever's doing that. Um, it still says mayhem. Oh, yeah, just take it off. It's no all problem. mayhem in my book. The bricklayer is the, uh, so Race for Glory, Audi versus Lancy, he says pass. The uh, bricklayer, there it is with Aaron Eckhart, um, with a special set of skills. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not terrible, but he also felt as though Everybody, you know, hit their marks, did everything well, just didn't quite really put it over the finish line. We've so line. been here before. Night Swim, which I was intrigued by and continue to be intrigued by. It's the premise that I feel has uh, a lot of depth to it. Get it? Swimming through <laughs> the water? Yeah. Uh, Michael says no. It's uh, uh, it's a it's a more or less just kind of a tepid um tepid i like that yeah seeing, you see what i've done seeing you're that rubbing they, off on dude me. seeing this they made this i think we shoot a movie here the water feature of doom yes <laughs> i just have the water feature that's true uh anyway that's he can't really recommend night swim but there are other scary films coming out maybe hang for those yeah uh michael likes the chances that the niners have this weekend in a game that doesn't really mean anything and um Anything about the Warriors? Well, uh, the Warriors uh, broke my heart last night. It was one of the most disheartening uh, games I've seen in a very There's long time. There's never been anything uh, like this. It mm. was it was uh, awful to watch. You know, um, I, what are you going to do? I mean, they don't have a clear-cut identity right now. Draymond Green is sitting uh, somewhere in a, in a rubber room trying to uh, deal with his anger issues. I, uh, the kids are great, you know, these young players that have come to the, uh, to the fore. But uh, last night, uh, the Joker from almost half court sunk a three-pointer that won the game mm. with no time well, left on the Well, that's what clock. he does. Uh, let me ask you one last question in the effort to squeeze you for every last bit. Phineas J. Whoopi asks, is Michael going to review Reacher Season 2? Uh, I already mentioned uh, Reacher Season I think 2 you a couple did, of weeks yes. ago. Thank you, Phineas. Thank you for listening. Uh, you know, my, my annotated uh, list of... I like that, Phineas. Sorry. My annotated I list of... I am sucker! Yeah. I, 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 my annotated list of the top 10 live-action narrative movies of 2023 is available at the current issue uh, of the Marina Times, and anyone interested in checking it out... Uh, and that column also includes lists of 15 more terrific movies from 2023, 10 more foreign language movies I loved in my wow. top five animated movies. You need only go to marinatimes.com. It's at the top of the homepage, and it's also on the front page of the print edition, so la-di-da. So only... to review your top 10, yeah. uh, 10 more. 15 more. 15 more. Then your top 10 foreign films that you like. And top five animated movies. That is like, I'm going to say this, that might be the best cinema list that I've ever come across. Except I filed the story before I could see Godzilla Minus One, which, by the way, was seriously amazing. So I feel like it wasn't complete, but here we are. That would have are. made your top 10? Yeah, so mea culpa. Well, it would have been, been 
11 or 12? Okay. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, what was what were your favorite movies from last year, Mark? I I don't think I got to the movies enough. I don't remember a lot, Michael. I'm on edibles a lot of the time when I see them. <laughs> it just it, it just it's all, you know, it's all a fog. There's some terrible Where films we can talk about at? them. Maybe we can talk about them next week. There are some really horrible movies I think from last year that people should avoid. I'll tell you what I was really one of my most anticipated films that I was disappointed by. And that was the Wes Anderson film, Asteroid yeah, City. I agree with you. I didn't like it. I, I loved its look, but I just felt it, it you know, it didn't. His and self, I was so looking forward to that. His self-indulgence can be a bit much. And it yeah. was all over the map. And it didn't cohere for me either, you know. But there, are some, a ding there are some really bad movies that came out last year. And that wasn't really bad. It was a noble no, exactly. attempt. exactly. It was just sort of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Wish we could stay. Love you. Looking forward to next week. He comes and goes on a rainbow. The great Michael Snyder, everybody, the culture blast. Go Niners! Go Niners. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.